Good morning. Good morning. Zoom tells me I am streaming live on Facebook. I hope that I am. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Thursday, December 23rd. If anybody has not welcomed you, I am welcoming you to a new day, to new mercies today. I welcome you to the goodness of God today. I welcome you to new opportunities, to new adventures in this day. I welcome you to that. And I welcome the Lord, I welcome Holy Spirit to this time together. And um, we're here together again, one more day. And today we get to close out Psalm 27. We are on part three of Psalm 27. We've been talking about it the last couple of days. And so today we are going to wrap it up, wrap it up. Um, so Psalm 27, again, a Psalm of David, and um, where he just, he was just crying out to the Lord, and let's hear what David had to say. Let us hear what David had to say. Okay, let me just get on here. All righty. Good morning, Abby. <laughs> My faithful friend, Abby. God bless you, honey, as always. Okay. We're going to dive in. Um, there's not too many verses here, so I'm going to try to go through them. And, and let's just hear what we can learn from this prayer that David prayed. Psalm 27, verse, starting at verse 7. David said, <clears throat> excuse me, hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. <laughs> You're welcome, girl. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. So at this point of the psalm, David is, is crying out to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call. You know, David had his moments when he cried out to God and, and God just, he felt God wasn't listening or God was delayed in answering. Um, so to me, I feel like, it shouldn't make us feel too bad, you know, because sometimes we think that we we pray and God is not hearing us or God is not responding to us. But, you know, we weren't the only ones <laughs> that happened to, just from what David wrote here, it happened to him. He, David felt the sorrow of silence. And we all experience that in our lives. At some point in our journey, we all experience the sorrow of silence. That happens, you know, it's that unpleasant time where you're waiting when you, you know, you're crying out to God and you're waiting to hear from him. And it seems like he's not listening, right? It seems like he's not answering us. But even though he wrote that here in another Psalm, in Psalm four, verse three, David said, know that the Lord has set apart for, for uh, has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord knows and hears when I call to him. So in another Psalm, he confesses that God hears when he calls to him. And so here David is looking to um, get a response from God as well, because he hadn't heard one. So verse eight, my heart says of you, seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. David says, my heart says of you, seek his face. So your face, Lord, I will seek. And what I get from that is that, you know, we all have a choice to either listen to our head or listen to our heart. You know, the head will tell you, you know what, just, just give up, just give up. God is not going to answer you. Um, how, how long have you been waiting how long have you been at this? And you haven't gotten a response yet, right? Um, uh, but David, David knew the heart of God. And he knew God from his heart, from deep in his heart. So even though, even though um, he wasn't getting the answer that he wanted right away, you know, his head could have been telling him, like, you know, just, just don't, 
you know, this is not working. This prayer thing is not working. Just move on. Give it up. Just let it go. God, God's not going to answer you. God is not real, right? These are the, these are the thoughts that we all struggle with. And, and David struggled with it too. But I love, I love what he said. He, he said, you know, my heart says of you, seek his face right? His heart was, was giving him the counsel to go ahead and, and, and not give up, to be persistent, right? And he knew he could do that because he had history with God. He knew that God had answered him many other times. That's why in, in Psalm 4.3, David said, the Lord hears when I call to him. That's why he said that there right? He had history with God. And so because he had history, he wasn't going to give up easily. His prayer was going to be before the Lord. And so in his heart, he resolved that he would continue to press until he got an answer. All right, verse nine, verse nine. Do not hide your face from me and do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. That is that. (laughs) When I read that, I feel like I feel like this is the little boy in David. You know, the, the, the little boy that is still within him that's making an appeal to his daddy. Right. He's like, do not don't hide your face from me. Don't don't turn your servant away in anger. You've been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my savior. Right? It's a, it's like, you know that, you know, when that little kid gets in trouble and he's trying to appease his daddy and, and he's saying things to change his mind, right? So I feel like that's what David is doing here, right? And then and then he he wraps up the the, the plea with. God, my savior, right? That's like saying my daddy, right? And he's trying to get in good. He's like, you know, you've been my helper. You've you've helped me before. So I need you to help me again. And um, so to me, David is like, you know, he's not giving up. He's saying, I'm going to seek your face and I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to say what I can to get your attention. And that's what he was doing. He was saying what he could to get the father's attention. Okay, verse 10. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Though my, fa- though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. He was saying that very confidently. But ooh, he is laying it thick on here. Do you see how convincing David is looking to be, looking to get an answer from the father? He is laying it on thick. You know, he's reminding God that his parents abandoned him. That's what forsaking means, to abandon, you know? And so we know this. We know, we know that David's parents weren't perfect. How do we know this? If you read other parts of the Psalms and you come to know David, you'll see he was a loner. That's why he spent a lot of time out taking care of the sheep. They they would just send him off into the field. He wasn't around his parents. He wasn't, it doesn't sound like he was close to his parents. And that's why he had a, he had such a deep and intimate relationship with God. You know, he didn't, he didn't have parents that made him feel special and even his brothers they were close to him he himself we know it wasn't the greatest father himself and I think it's because he didn't have a good model of what parenting was so he wasn't able to be a great father he had a bunch of kids he had a bunch of sons and there was a lot of conflict within his family and his family fell apart and so for for David to say even my mother and father, my father and mother abandoned me. 
I know you're not going to abandon me. And he was kind of like, I feel like he was trying to lay a guilt trip on the father because the father wasn't answering him. And he's like, they abandoned me. Don't, don't you abandon me too. Don't abandon me, God. And so did you know that you can talk to your heavenly father in this way? That you can be this real with him? You can be as real as you need to be with him. Right? God is not looking, God is not looking for people to be prim and proper before him. You know, he does he doesn't want you to come to him like you have to walk on eggshells and to speak to him as though he's distant. Right? Like I remember back in the day, you know, I would hear people say, Thou heavenly father, you know, God most high, come hither. <laughs> Come hither to this poor and weary soul. <laughs> I mean, you could talk like that if you want, for real. You could talk if you want. If God makes you feel good to talk in proper language like that. But, you know, we don't have to approach the father in that manner. Just like David. David was real. He's like, look, my mother and father abandoned me. Don't you abandon me too, right? He was laying that guilt trip on the father because he wasn't hearing from him. And so, so David is so cute. Like, you know, he wore his heart on his sleeve. He let us know by this line alone that he felt abandoned by his parents. And he didn't hide that truth. And he was saying to God, don't you abandon me too. Don't abandon me. And so we can pray these real, real prayers to God right? We don't have to hide. We don't have to hide our real emotions, our real feelings. God wants you to lay it all out before him. And that's why I love that we have these prayers, because we learn how to pray. We learn how to ask and be persistent. If David wasn't persistent, he wouldn't get an answer. If he would just be like, well, God's not listening and move on with his life, he would never get an answer. But he he just would lay it on thick to the father because he wanted an answer. Okay, verse 11 and 12, because my voice is going. <laughs> so I need to wrap this up quickly. Verse 11 and 12. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting, spouting malicious accusations. And so just from this here alone, we see David, David made some mistakes, guys. He, he was this, we love our boy, but he was not perfect. He didn't do everything right. That's why he, he says to the Lord, teach me your way lead me in a straight path, right? Because his, because his oppressors were coming after him, right? They were, they were, um, because they were surrounding him, right? He was like, Lord, lead me, let, teach me your way. Um, and usually if he didn't hear from God, it was because there was some kind of consequence happening here, for the things that either he was doing or not doing right at that moment, right? Because the Bible says, if a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies are at peace with him. Think about that. Think about it. If a man's ways please the Lord, his enemies are at peace. So obviously we know David's ways weren't pleasing to the Lord because his enemies were not at peace. They were coming after him. He was being set up, right? And when he didn't walk right, his enemies would gain over him. And so that was a way for God to check David and let him know, look, whatever you're doing is not working. You need to turn yourself around, my brother. <laughs> you need to turn things around. So what can we learn? What can we learn just from this part alone? That sometimes if we see things are not going our way and we're having constant opposition and constant oppression, 
you know, I, I feel like that's a good indicator that we need to step back and evaluate how we're living and what we're doing. How's our love walk? How's our love walk? Is it good? Is it good? Because if it is, then our enemies would be at peace with us. And then we should be like David. David said in, in um, Psalm 26, when we spoke about it a couple of days ago, David said, test me, try me, examine me, right? Like, Lord, look at me, look at my ways and see if, if I'm not, if there's anything that needs correction. So this is the only way. If we, if we come and we're honest before the Lord, if we come before him and we say, God, test my heart, make sure that my walk is right. We'll avoid difficult times, I believe, if we're constantly checking ourselves before the Lord. Because if you check yourself, it's much, much easier than allowing God to check you. And by checking you, I mean correct you, right? Correcting us because we're just not doing things the way we should. Um, but I'm also, I'm also not saying that whenever you don't hear from God, it's because you're not doing the right things. I'm not saying that completely. I'm just saying, you know, if things are not going your way, if there's constant opposition, um, just, just go before the Lord and ask him to search your heart. See if there's anything within that needs correcting and let him correct. But sometimes if we're facing opposition, it could be that God allows that too. And it's only so that he can be glorified in our lives, right? Sometimes he, he puts us through seasons um, and he'll test us to see if we're going to seek him, to see if we're going to pursue him, and also to prove to the enemy that we are being true to him, just like with Job, right? Job was, Job faced a lot of things and God allowed it because God knew Job's heart, that he was a man that would not back down, regardless of all the blessings, regardless if he lost all his blessings, he was not going to back down. Excuse me. So, um, so I love that. David said, teach me your ways, Lord. Lead me in a straight path. That that's a beautiful prayer to pray. That is a beautiful prayer to pray. Now, this is it. These are the last two verses of Psalm 27. Listen to this, verse 13 and verse 14. I remain confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Mm. I got to give him, I'm not going to clap loud, but I got to clap. Bravo, David. Bravo, David. What a way to close this psalm. I remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh my gosh, what a way to close this. You know, verse 13, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is one of my favorite, favorite verses. I have several, several. I'm sure you all do too. You have several verses that you, you love. But let me tell you, <laughs> Abby says, Jesus, yes, yes. Um, there's a song out. It's been out for some time by Bethel Music called The Goodness of God. And I wish I could share my screen and just play it for us. But if I do that, I'm going to, who knows what, I'll probably kick myself out of the live. Um, so I'll share the link later and I cannot sing it for you <laughs> because I, you know, have a little something, something going on today, the last couple of days. Um, but the goodness of God. Oh, that's such a great song. And my friends and I from perpetual worship, we always minister this song. We always find a way to squeeze it in 
whenever we we minister because it's it's such a powerful song the goodness of god um but there is another song a couple of songs have been written based on this particular verse verse 13 another song that has been out for a while it's been out for for you know a little while maybe two two years three years um it's it's called land of the living by upper room and i'll also share the link later in the comments so you can go back and listen to it let me tell you land of the living was written based on also verse 13 and that was a song that was my theme song during the pandemic, during 2020, when 2020, um, when, you know, the pandemic and the, and the COVID started happening, you know, back in March of 2020, um, I remember hearing that song and I was just like, oh my gosh, it, it, it says, because I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And just repeating that over and over, you know, they would just repeat that line over and over. Oh my gosh. There was something that just like, it, it, it broke me out of fear and anxiety because I was, you know, I was seeing things happen. I was seeing reports of people that I knew that were passing away, people that were getting sick you know, during 2020, and it was just very, very, I, you all know, we were all very anxious, because we had never experienced anything like that. So I remember listening to that song, and that song stirred my heart with faith. And I had to declare that over myself, over my family, over my friends, over everybody that was within my circle, that we would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, there's power in our words. There's power in our words. And I love that we have these scriptures that we can speak over ourselves, that we can speak life over ourselves. And when there's fearful moments in life that we can cling to those things. So I want to thank David for writing that. I want to thank David for giving us words that we can cling to, that we can sing, that we can declare, that we can prophesy over ourselves. It is powerful, powerful. And so he says, wait, just wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. That means be strong and be courageous and wait on the Lord. Amen. Amen. So that's all I have. That is Psalm 27. That's why I say bravo. Bravo to David for closing us out. I remain confident in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I just declare that over your lives today, that you will see the goodness of the Lord today in the land of the living right? We're, we're going to see his goodness in heaven, but we need to see his goodness here on earth. We need to see his faithfulness here on earth. We need to be able to testify that God is real, that he's true to his word, that he's faithful, that he, his love never fails. Amen. Amen. So that's all I have. I am not sure if I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve even though I should be back, but um, I don't know how I will be feeling tomorrow, but I, uh, if I, I'm here, praise the Lord, if I sit back tomorrow and um, for the holiday, then just forgive me, but I will be back on Monday. I have a couple of guests next week, so I want you to look out for that, and um, we're still, we're still promoting um the worship center. We are building a worship center in Patterson where we're going to train the Levites to write these kinds of songs, to write the new songs of this generation, to write the songs that are from heaven and release them over this earth. So we are training the Levites. We're training musicians. We're training singers 
to come before the Lord and give those gifts back to God. So look out for that. If you know people that need to be trained, send them our way. Send them our way. We are, we are going to make sure that they become skillful in the gifts that God has given them. All right. Love you guys. God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed, blessed day. And um, you're going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. Ciao, ciao. God bless.